the bench, there's Larry Hughes coming in and getting a hoop. So, again, a lot of things right now, uh, Larry's, a lot of stuff that he wanted, Coach Brown wanted, are starting to happen for the Bobcats. And you really felt heading into this game that Larry Hughes could be one of those players, a veteran, uh, St. Louis U, that played for Larry Hughes, uh, played for Larry Brown as a rookie. There it is, good offensive rebound by Tyrus Thomas. Coming all the way from the top of the key to go track that one down and give him an extra possession. And then Hughes finished it off. I, I like Hughes in this series. Just his nice matchup against J.J. Redick as J.J. has the ball right now going in for a jump shot. And, boy, I think he has improved that part of his game, that hard dribble pull-up. But I like the Hughes-Redick matchup uh, going in favor maybe of Larry getting some drive, getting by him, and maybe creating some offense for his teammates. You'll hear boos for J.J. Redick. Yes, we're in North Carolina, but this is a University of North Carolina Tar Heel town. Not a Duke City. About three hours south of Chapel Hill in Durham. Here's Petrus to three. No. And a rebound for Wallace. Second quarter, Charlotte by one. This is the longest they've held the lead. They didn't have the lead at all in game two. Wallace is fouled. He'll go back to the line. He was in the act. Well, right now you're starting to see the Bobcats take advantage of Howard being on the bench. They haven't been able to do that at all. And as you can see, when Howard's out of the game, just the turnovers and jump shots that they've taken just really has been mind-boggling because you can't understand why they do that with Howard out. You can see right now that you know, Larry Brown, they went over all these same statistics we're looking at. He went over with his team and said, when he's out of the game, sitting on the bench as he is right now, we're going to attack the paint, and Gerald Wallace just did. So I, I, I expect that right now it's funny, you know, Matt, uh, how a team gets so much more comfortable coming home. The, the court's the same, everything's the same, but it's the familiar surroundings, I think, just get you a little more comfortable. And they're right now are much more in tune to the game plan. They average 98.3 points a game at home, and they limit teams to just 91.8. That was during the regular season, although Orlando was 2-0 here during the regular season. Hughes comes away with it. Beats Reddick to the bucket. The lead grows. It's five. More defense turning into offense for the Charlotte Bobcats. Largest advantage, nine turnovers, 16 points, Kevin, off of turnovers. Petrus and another one. The second time he's turned it over in that area. That's his tenth for the Orlando Magic. His second here in the quarter. And here you go. Long rebound, a tip out. Hughes gets it. Attack, straight line drive, left hand layup. And again, long rebounds, block shots, and turn you know, any steals. You've got to run on those if you're the Charlotte Bobcats. Get it, get back, get in, and get, get attacking Orlando before they get set. And you heard Stan Van Gundy earlier in between quarters talk about we've got to get our defense set, and they're not allowing us to. Wallace will check out seven points, two rebounds, 15 minutes of action. No, Chandler battling, can't come down with it. Chandler along with Jackson, Hughes, Augustine, and Dion. Reddick bringing it up, working with Gore Tuck, and he's fouled. Fouled by Steven Jackson. And majority owner Michael Jordan. Some playoff experience there. Yeah, majority <laughs> you know, owner, assistant coach, he's doing it all over there. <laughs> he, he's been talking to Larry quite a bit, talked to him prior to the start of the series and throughout about how he wants his team to play and imparting some wisdom on Gerald Wallace. Shot got, clock down to four. He's got a lot of wisdom to impart, I'll tell you that. Great move by J.J. Reddick. Again, going left, one or two dribbles pulling up, and I said it earlier, but he didn't have that part to his game earlier a couple years ago. More, much more of a catch-and-shoot guy, really worked hard. He has worked hard in the offseason, has four points on two and two shooting. Another 10 of the shot clock. Hughes with the ball fake, now drives underneath Diaw with a hook in Boris Diaw. They've been calling for him, that's his first shot of the game. 
And I know that feels good for him to have that ball go in. When you see that ball go in, boy, it does wonders for your mind. And hopefully that will free him up that he maybe will get a little more aggressive. I see Reddick going up on a three, misses it, and Captain Jack with the rebound. Charlotte shooting 50%, and an offensive foul is going to be charged to Chandler. And Chandler picking up the foul. Ooh, nice little pass, floater over the top, nice little jump float for Dio to get his first two points of the game, and I know he feels good right now running down the fourth thinking, thank you, thank you, thank you, I needed that. Especially after the fact that he scored six points in the first quarter of game one and only five since that time, and Nazi Muhammad made an impact in today's first quarter as Chandler checks out. Chandler sitting with a one. Jameer Nelson, 19 points in the first quarter, and a foul is going to be charged to DJ Augustine. And little adjustments we talked about. We talked about Larry going with Tyrus Thomas, at, you know, at the five spot um, with the Bobcats. They got good mileage out of that, Matt. I, I thought that they played with energy, and I thought Tyrus Thomas gave him a couple extra possessions. And you can see they're changing things up a little bit. They're back to the standard big lineup now with Mah with uh, Muhammad versus uh, Cortana. Jackson on Reddick. Gortat sets the screen and a turnover. Hughes looks up the floor and Reddick picks up the foul. He was frustrated that a call wasn't happening at the other end for himself. And a frustration foul there. Sure was. I tell you what, he's coming down right now and he said, I'm not happy, and I'm going to take it out on you. <laughs> that was like grabbed him. That was almost like your Rambus foul there, or, or the offensive foul you said it was. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there's, a, there's a very rare turnover for uh, Bobcats so far this game. Only their third. Lewis, the three, way off. Diaw with a rebound. Chance to get out. Hughes steps into the three. Largest lead. Yep, there we go. Larry Hughes now with seven points. Again, coming off that bench, three from three, three, three from three from the field. And I know one thing. Larry Brown's thinking, thank goodness my bench came out to play today and got a little spark and giving us some life. Plus ten off of the bench. Take a look at the Ford driving force. And in the second quarter in the first two games, it has been Michael Petras making threes. He's 7 for 11 from the three-point line. And most of us are coming in the second quarter. He's been a big force to reckon with that second quarter. Petras averaging 8.5 points, nearly 10 minutes in the second quarter. And you see the productivity, 5 of 7 from deep. But Reddick is the only Magic to have scored here in the second quarter today. And you look around the playoffs under the radar performances. Joe Kim Noah against Cleveland. How about Durant? The 19 rebounds in the defense late against Kobe. Millsap. And then, of course, the future Hall of Famer, Jason Kidd. A lot of guys playing, playing big basketball, but boy, KD will never be under the radar anymore. <laughs> Kevin Durant's coming out. This is a coming out party in the playoffs, and he's working his way into the top five players in the league. I don't know if he's really ever under the radar. No. And he can flat out play the scoring leader in the NBA this season. Of course, out of Texas, just like DJ Augustine, who has to guard Jameer Nelson. Carter has struggled here early. Shot clock down to five. Let Nelson do it. And Nelson misses his first shot of the game. Yeah, right now, Charlotte's defense is really active. They're really moving, and uh, Orlando's having a tough time dealing with all that activity. Double comes to Diaw and a turnover. Didn't look to really attack the basket on there. Matt was looking to pass the entire time he had it. Make a move to the basket. If the defense comes, then you make your pass if you're Boris Diaw. Can't be passive. Here's Lewis. Move. Rashard Lewis, so concerned about a pull-up, puts it on the deck. Great move by Rashard. When things aren't going well, attack the basket. You're going to get fouled, get some layups, get some easy shots. They shoot a lot of threes, but you just can't live on those. you got to know when, to, when it's time to put the ball on the floor and attack. 
Six point advantage. Nazi Muhammad shot no, and Reddick flies in and handles it. Vince Carter comes away.